Hi, everybody. It is still May 13, 2021. Antifa is only an idea, okay? So when you read about Antifa or see in videos Antifa, remember, it doesn't exist. It's only an idea. Democratic leaders told you that, so... Actually, this whole article is really non-existent. I can't wait until black people lynch white people. Have you been following the news about this white supremacy, critical race theory, um, white fragility, all of the trainings that are being taken, that are taking place, corporate America, universities and colleges and schools and all over, all over. The segregation that is taking place, it's a wow. I'm going to do a video on on it, and I will only be able to capture a fraction, but it's bad, okay? And I have to wonder, you know, all of these people in universities, in, uh, well, we, all, we know that this is the... the um, Marxists divide and conquer. They couldn't do it, you know, on uh, Marx's proletariat bourgeoisie economic divide and conquer because we had too strong of a middle class. We'll do it on race. But even race, I mean, things got so much better in our country. Wow. And they're doing the race. So... They're doing it up. Um, and there are, you know, younger generations that, for them, the 60s, the civil rights movement, all of that was, well, that's a history that really doesn't belong to them. So they have been indoctrinated, I guess, to believe that we are a racist country when we're not. Okay, well. Antifa protester. I can't wait until black people lynch white people. See, you know, the violence behind all of this rhetoric, that's what is very alarming. So we have leftists now burning U.S. flags, chanting death to America. Well, these are, you know, the brown shirts these are the useful idiots, man. Incredible, incredible how stupid they are. They're bringing in a world that is, well, once that world gets, you know, a little bit more solidified here, cemented, uh, they get killed off. I guess they don't know that. All right, Seattle. Seattle. Here. Wow, man. A person part of the anti Antifa black bloc at the protest against Billy Graham Association event near Seattle shouted racist statements. Here we go. What was that? You want to say it again? Um, yes. I can't wait until black people lynch my people. That's messed up. Oh. I'm going to be opening the roadway up here. That's literally <laughs> racist. For your safety, you please you stay on the sidewalks. You're wearing dark clothing and dark oh. darkness. Oh. I want black and white people to get along. I don't know if anybody in your group, that's why I would agree with that statement. That was weird. Oh, man, that's legal. Legal. You agree with that yes, statement? Yes, I do. Again, this is the Bellevue Police Department. We're going to be opening up the roadway at the intersection to traffic. Come on now. The lies fed. It doesn't matter where the lies come from. It doesn't matter the relationship between the liar and, well, most are acceptors. Uh, it doesn't, nothing, nothing good can come from lies. So if you want to check out before I do that video how racist our country has become uh, towards white people, 
go to campus reform. But check this out. Campus paper editor in chief couldn't walk past a white person without shaking. Without shaking. Uh, all right, I'm just going to show you a few more. Blaming Jim Crow, Northwestern student journalist says the way white people walk on sidewalks is too racist. Wow. Uh, he added that the racism that undergirded Jim Crow is to blame. How dare you walk on a sidewalk? Yeah. Well, this, uh, this opinion editor of the Northwestern University student newspaper recently published an article asserting that white people walk awkwardly on sidewalks because of their internalized racism. Hmm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> Stanford newspaper tweeted movie reference deemed racist will now subject entire staff to anti-bias training. It was the satire section of Stanford University's student newspaper. Um, there are uh, student government race between two black students. I, I don't understand, though. If we're so systemically racist, how is it that these people get into positions of power? Two black students at Stanford are running for uh, student government, whatever positions, I guess, you know, to head the student government. How? I don't understand a lot of what's going on today. Well, I guess it was because of the, the conflict between King Kong and Godzilla, Godzilla. And, well, <laughs> oh God, had to apologize. I am so sorry for the harm it has caused the black community and the students referenced in the tweet. I also apologize that it took students from the black community to raise concerns before the Daily took action on the tweet and that our initial response to the community member who flagged the tweet was hasty and insensitive. Oh, okay. So, Erin Wu the editor-in-chief of the Stanford Daily. Um, it's the paper's humor section. And she took full responsibility for the incident, making it clear that the tweet was not written by humor writers or editors. Nevertheless, the entire editorial team will undergo anti-bias training to address the ignorance that was at the root of the tweet's creation. I never knew. I never knew how soft the younger uh, generation of black Americans are. Oh, you're just such cupcakes. And you need to be protected by whom? The establishment. Safe spaces for um, blacks and, I guess, non-white students at so many universities and colleges because you get so hurt by what takes place. It's the establishment that's protecting you. How nice. Okay. Anybody who knows me knows full well I'm not a racist. Oh, boy. How dare I say that? That means I am a racist. And I've got white fragility that I guess I'm defending or guarding against. I don't know. Um, 
Okay, well, let's just go back here, okay? This one can't walk past white people without shaking. Editor-in-chief of a University of Denver campus newspaper wrote an op-ed expressing her anger toward white people about the Atlanta shootings targeting Asian women. And I do believe that there were other races. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Dear white people, that was the, uh, I guess, the start of the um, the piece that she wrote, Kiana Morrison, Dear White People. It's nice that she included the deer. So, she went on to describe how she felt about learning about the shooting. She wrote, I couldn't walk past a white person without shaking on my way to work. Marsan alleged that all white people, all white people are responsible for a reported surge in violence against Asian Americans and that using the term China virus is spreading xenophobia and white supremacy. Marsan denounced any choosing not to speak out about these events for committing micro-aggressions. Don't fully understand that, but anyway, okay, fine. Using racially coded language and deny that silence is violent. Okay, she also accused the faculty and administration of crowding out racial minorities with their whiteness. You are administrators who attend a support space and being the only ones who feel comfortable and safe enough to turn your videos on, flood the Zoom call with your whiteness, it will remind us of your privilege and power as we grieve. All trauma being experienced is historically rooted in white supremacy. All trauma. All, every, every, everything, all, all trauma, white supremacy, adding that black and brown communities are not provided the same protections by law enforcement. Hmm. She concluded by calling for radical change and for whites to sacrifice their power and privileges. How do we do that? If if we are privileged simply because of our race, would you like us to rip our skin off? Okay. All white people, all, and me, you, everyone, you know, uh, I guess all, all, Oh, well, okay, all white people. It's hard to really understand somebody who thinks like this. I mean, is she like a Marxist who gets paid to write this crap? Maybe, maybe. Okay, but all white people are responsible for a reported surge in violence against Asian Americans. Well, let's just check it out. Hmm, black man. Okay, well... Ah, warning. Some of the beatings are very hard to take. Very hard to take. This 13-second video released by the NYPD is so graphic we had to freeze it. It shows the attacker repeatedly kicking and stomping on someone's head as the victim lies motionless on the ground before the attacker walks away. It happened. Okay, caught on camera, Asian man brutally attacked in East Harlem. And this was, uh, I guess, what, three weeks ago? Um, Black man. Let's see. Video attack at Asian-owned North Houston beauty store caught on camera, March 24th. 
For a family that's been in the beauty supply business for 10 years, what cameras caught happening inside their North Houston Uptown Beauty Supply Store on Kirkendall on March 17th was hard to stomach. First time here. The store's owner, Zhang Kim, was assaulted, punched in the face. But it's what she says they said in the process that caught her off guard. You Asian, Chinese pork pork. She says there were... Black woman. Brazen attacks against Asian Americans. In San Francisco, this 84-year-old Thai man died after being shoved. Now, a chorus of voices calling for allies and action. We are a community that's under attack. Broadway's Leia Salonga urging a united front against hate. There's been the Black Lives Matter movement, and now it's an Asian Lives Matter movement, these kinds. It was a black man. Custody tonight for a brutal attack on an Asian couple in Tacoma. Good evening. I'm Jessica Janner Castro. And I'm Mark Wright. Good evening. That attack happened in November, but um, we should say that uh, a video of the beating recently surfaced and went viral. Today, police took the teen into custody. They say this case is a perfect example of police. If you want to know the details, fine, but it was a black kid who beat up an Asian couple. couple. Oh, my God. The contents of this cell phone video, too shocking and explicit to play in its entirety, but the person recording, Hong Lee, captured a terrifying encounter with a customer inside El Torino's restaurant last Monday. She stopped in to grab lunch. When she says this patron asked her to dine with him, she politely declined and couldn't believe what happened next. A barrage of verbal attacks, both racial and sexual. I'm sorry, can you help me? Yeah, help I'm very help abusive we were all just shocked that this was happening. And so I was just reaching out for help. And so my instinct was to ask for help from the people around me. <laughs> Lee, who was inside the restaurant by herself and too afraid to leave, called a friend on the phone, sobbing in disbelief. You hear either a customer or an employee in the background trying to de-escalate the situation. But things got even worse. My name is Frederick Douglas Smith. Lee said this customer starts approaching her again in a violent manner, blurting out not just a name, but what he said was his social security number and date of birth, even daring police to come after him. Can you help me, please? This is being really scary. If nobody ain't nobody gonna help you. Please take this seat in front of me. Lee eventually... What do you say? What, what, how, how, you know, look. Another black man, an Asian woman, and I am telling you, the violence, some of it edited because it's so graphic. It's, uh, it's look, I, I can't, I don't want to watch it. I can't. I mean, and <clears throat> if you do a search, you will also find that there are white men also, you know, attacking people. And so it's not about the color of your skin. It is about how unbelievably effed up you are. But for people to be coming out and claiming that all white people are responsible for the surge of violence against Asian Americans... Okay, well, I guess I just feel like I've got to document it. Attack too brutal to show in its entirety. A 65-year-old Asian-American woman on her way to church in New York City kicked in her stomach, her head then stomped on three times. Police... By a black man. I guess I just have to document all of these friggin' lies as lies. Because anybody believing this? Well, if you believe it, then you too are effed up in the head. 
Police make an arrest in a bloody subway attack that a witness says was racially motivated. 36-year-old Mark Matthew of the Bronx is charged with assault. CBS. Get your Go get your kids. He just robbed your dumb ass. Go get the kids. He said, get the fuck off of him. Get your ass. He said, he said, he said get the f It's a black man. The owner of an historic San Francisco business caught on camera flashing his gun. It's video you'll see only on ABC7. Tonight, he explains why he's taking matters into his own hands to defend Chinatown. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dion Lim. That dramatic video is from outside the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory. I spoke exclusively to the co-owner tonight. The guy just pushed like this real quick. He did the first push. This new video from police helps quite a bit. We now know that he was wearing a very distinct hat. This guy having a casual conversation in a bodega is the same person that police say viciously stomped on the head of a 61-year-old Asian man. The horrific assault happened Friday night in Harlem at the corner of 125th Street and 3rd Avenue, where today we found a stop Asian hate poster. The victim was collecting cans here when that attacker shoved him to the ground. You mean to tell me he was picking up bottles outside and they beat him? Wow. Joanna Tucker lives in the same building as the victim and his wife. She says they just moved in. Police tell us that her neighbor remains in the hospital in a medically induced coma. I didn't think nobody would bother them. They're so quiet. They don't bother nobody. Hmm. The newly released images of the suspect give us a better look at him. That night he had on a black jacket and pants, white shoes and a multicolored hat. On Twitter, the mayor called the attack outrageous. And he all right, you know, I am, I'm, I'm really, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm sinking from all of these lies. They're so outrageous, and uh, they're just not going to stop unless people really stand up to the liars, <clears throat> to the liars, to the liars that are destroying this country. I don't want to see any comments that are obviously, patently, blatantly racist. Because if mainstream media invited all, all of those black Americans who are speaking out against, against this white supremacy, critical race theory, uh, whites are responsible for everything, none of this would be taking place. None of it would be taking place. None of it. So don't write your bullshit lies about how it's all black people or whatever because I do get those comments, and man, does it upset me. I don't know what to do about all of this. I just know that there's really not anything that any of us can do with so many people who are just sitting back and too afraid to speak out, too afraid to counter the lies. And that, too, is destroying us. So people, all people, all races, all genders, all everything, those who know that this is wrong, 
You need to speak out now. You need to speak out now. You need to confront every liar in your life. (sighs) Because nothing, nothing good comes from lies. And the only healing force is truth. That's it. That's the only healing force. It's the, the truth. Speak it, live it, and confront those who don't. 